last 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence start. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right. At long last, the NASA Artemis SLS core stage test, round two. Uh, T minus two minutes. T minus two minutes. All right. So a call was they just announced at T minus two minutes, uh, which is basically they have finished uh, the gimbal test with the actuators and they're bringing them back into the null position. Uh, and then basically at this point they basically are getting ready for powering up the engines. This is a big test. Um, Again, uh, core stage transitions to internal power, roughly a minute and 30 seconds out. T minus one third, switch to internal power. And? And then uh, the Reno gyro compass alignment converges at roughly a minute. And then we'll have to go for uh, ALS. That pole short at T minus 33 seconds. It's a big test. Hope it works. It's a, it's a powerful rocket. T minus one minute falling personnel report. Go, no go for ALS. AEA. PEA. Go. AGA. Go. REA. Go. NEA. Go. NTC. Vehicle and speed two systems are go for ALS. And the, at this point, you see the, uh, the, the uh, basically the water system has come on full bore. All right, select those bad boys. All right, T-minus 30, we're in ALS. And you just got the, the uh, official start of ALS. Next up is and the hydrogen. Look at all that engine chilling. On at, uh, 12 seconds before That's what all that, that fume is there. They're pre-cooling the lines down so that when they H boys okay. on. go for engine start. H boys are on and engine starts. Come on. It's been okay. Let's go. And all personnel, we've got engine start and we're going to monitor your system and grass is in control. Booyah. Oh yeah, look at that mock diamond and that other one in the background. So that's pure water vapor right there, pretty much. It's hydrogen and oxygen, so it's uh, about as clean as it gets and as efficient as it gets. And you'll notice that the, the exhaust is clear because superheated steam, which is the exhaust, is clear. Which is good. Okay, spectra control, TVC. So these are giant uh, pneumatic actuators that are going to be moving the engines around. And that's how they steer the, uh, the rocket as it uh, ascends. And that was the crucial thing. Oh, look at those things. So that shaking is, is controlled. That's not just... They're not shaking because of the exhaust, they're shaking, so they're cycling them around in a circle to make sure that they have precise control of them. And see, there you go, that's their default state. Ah, those flamies up there are not necessarily what they want, but it's not necessarily something that is wrong. Uh, hydrogen is extremely hard to... To seal, it's the smallest of all the elements. It's only one atom, so it, it leaks through everything. Especially at the pressures that they run it at, which is like north of 6,000 psi, uh, it's almost impossible not to have leaks. It is impossible, basically. That's why they have those little sparklers at the beginning, right before they light them. That's to burn away the excess. Uh, hydrogen um, 
systems so that when they light the engines, it doesn't light all that other hydrogen that's in the air and create a big yeah, fireball. Yeah, there's, there's a strange FRG profile. As you can see the mock diamond there in that, uh, that engine in the back, that bluish thing coming down. That's a, a shock effect in the exhaust plume. Pretty interesting. Basically, the exhaust is moving so fast that the air outside of the nozzle exit is acting. It, it's essentially non-moving, and it acts almost like a solid wall. And so that that fast fluid, that interface, you can't. There has to be this boundary layer that forms, and it slows the flow down, and it acts like a wall, and it creates these crisscross shock waves. And where those intersect from the two sides, you get a diamond shape, and that's what a mock diamond is. They're pretty beautiful. Man, oh man. So we're about three and a half minutes into the plus time. I think they're trying for a full eight minute burn, which is the length of burn that they will have for an actual launch to orbit. They were short of that in their first attempt. They had an auto abort sequence initiated by the computer. I think they had to replace a major component, so it might take a while. Look at that. Uh, it's forming a rain cloud, and it's creating rain behind. You can see those those darker columns there behind the big steam cloud. Those are, those are rain. That's rain falling. Because it's just so much water vapor. It's basically creating its own little rain shower because it's the it's high high temperature uh, steam and it wants to rise. It's convection. The acoustic waves are shaking the camera. Hmm. Five and sixteen. Go back to showing the engines. These are big engines too. That engine bell is not small. I've seen them in person. They're they're pretty large. You can see the steam hitting the surface of the water and like sticking to it. It's kind of interesting to look at. We're just over five and a half minutes in the plus count. I think that orange there is from the uh, the burning that's going on up above the rockets, and because the exhaust is moving at such a high velocity, it's acting like it's it's a low it's an area of very low pressure because of Bernoulli's equation. Basically, velocity the higher the velocity, the lower the pressure, um, and that's sucking that those orange flames that we saw up above. It's sucking them down, and that's why you get that orange glow. I suspect. There might be some other mechanism in there as well, because uh, as I said, hydrogen and oxygen nominally burns clear. There's no carbon. Carbon burns orange, so that's why kerosene, uh, like SpaceX Falcon 9, their exhaust is very orange, uh, because carbon burns orange. You can tell a lot um, about the propellant combination by looking at the color of the exhaust. We're coming up on seven minutes. Come on, baby. Time. Come on, baby. One more minute. Let's go. Did you put seven minutes? Come on, NASA. Man, if I could be there in person. 
Ironically, I was in Mississippi yesterday, uh, but not for NASA. It was for storm chasing. Video forthcoming. We didn't see much. Just to breakfast. More gimbling. Yeah, I don't know quite what all that orange is, to be honest. But I'm sure it's okay. Two plus eight minutes. All right. And then the PBC profile number two. All right, so we're just over eight minutes into the plus count. Well, personnel is coming up. Hopefully, on a lot of depletion here, and we have a cut on. Here we go. All right. REA, I can hear REA on channel 16. This is the app cheering. REA on channel, <laughs> channel 16, Verif, safe engine shutdown. Go NASA, go! And you're in push shutdown standby, correct? correct. Oh. Okay, all personnel, that takes us to page 656. All personnel go to page 656 to start the post hot fire shutdown securing operations. It's a long checklist. All right. Personnel on Bill, as you said earlier, as we talked about earlier, the team was hoping to get at least four minutes of oh, data. Yeah. And we. Yes. We what? All right, they are proceeding with the so you can see that rain procedures now. now. As we said earlier, the team was hoping to get at least four minutes of data, and they did get more than ten, than eight minutes, excuse me. So they should have gotten what they need. The team will obviously need to look at that data, but based on what we've seen, uh, Bill, tell us more about what, you, what it looked like to you. Yeah, so they uh, cl clearly got the uh, full duration that they were after, which That's is still really just great engine news, and I think you right heard there. the applause they had, you know, the command to shut down. Nitrogen exactly purge, I'm assuming, for. coming through to no clean all the prop out of the lines. Uh, test commit criteria violations that would have uh, prompted an early shutdown. So that was really good news. Um, you know, clearly there's a lot of data that now that's going to have to be analyzed. The engineers got to see uh, what worked and what didn't or what needs to be tweaked and what doesn't. But uh, that said, I think uh, the applause says a lot about uh, how the team feels, you know, that they got through the test and it looks pretty good right now. Good deal, good deal. Yeah, so um, there, there, there was some, uh, you know, observed uh, burning on the aft end. Uh, one of the things that Boeing had done uh, pr after the last test was to apply uh, a lot of extra cork to the aft end because we aren't, we aren't going to we didn't, unfortunately, with this test, right, we're not flying through uh, the thin air as, you, as we ascend. And so we knew we were going to have more of that, and that was one of the reasons why they added that. They also put a tape covering over the top of that. Uh, we knew that, uh, you know, if the tape gets hot enough, that adhesive layer below the tape surface is going to start burning, and so we clearly saw a lot of That's that. That's what the orange uh, was. But there was nothing that prompted uh, to shut down early, which was, which was really good news. So it's just the protective Great, thermal, thank you, thermal protection. I think that's that all the updates that we'll have for you here as the team the proceeds through their shutdown. Bottom half of the engine. So we'll turn it back over to Lee. And that's what was burning, and that was freeze dead orange. So thank you, Catherine. Congratulations to the team. So as the engineers gather the data from today, we look ahead to the next steps. This core stage will be refurbished and sent by barge to our Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Yeah, buddy. There, it will be stacked in the iconic vehicle assembly building with other elements of the SLS rocket, including the twin solid rocket boosters, Those are big which boys. our teams are, have already begun stacking on the mobile launcher. The core stage and boosters will then be stacked with the upper stage and the Orion spacecraft. All of this work putting us on track to roll out to launch pad 39B for a liftoff later this year on Artemis 1. That would be something I We've got I want several other firsts on the horizon. That's for sure. This year, the first of our commercial lunar payload services, or CLIPS missions, begin with two companies delivering instruments to the lunar surface. The golf cart sized Viper rover will search for water at the moon's south pole. And a small CubeSat called Capstone will head to the moon, scouting the orbit to be used on later human missions. 
So you got to know Meanwhile, what the mass the is like because the mass of the moon is fairly inconsistent. The Artemis missions, which will carry astronauts to the they moon, is Apollo. coming together. The Orion spacecraft for Artemis 2 is down at Kennedy undergoing assembly, and the spacecraft for Artemis 3, as well as the rockets for Artemis 2 and 3, are also being manufactured right now at Mishu. So that wraps it up for us here today. After a major milestone on America's return Let's of astronauts go. to the lunar surface, a successful yes. test of the core stage of the Space Launch System rocket. Heck yeah. Up next, we'll be replaying the test, and we will have a post-test briefing in about two hours here on NASA Television. We invite you to follow all of our progress online at nasa.gov slash Artemis program, or join the conversation online with at NASA Artemis and at NASA underscore SLS. Thank you for joining us. You're welcome. And go Artemis. Go Artemis indeed. Well, it'll be, it's really cool to see what uh, what this is going to do. I'm really excited for, uh, for uh, what they got here at NASA. So, whew, going back to the moon, baby. Going back to the moon.